Hello everyone, I'm Martin McCain. And my name is Martina McCain. And we're the McCain Duo, and we are excited for our new interview uh, with Stephen Vogel, um, who's also one of my former students. Um, he is a professor at Texas Lutheran University, um, freelancer within the Houston area, um, just performs all over the place, and we're really excited to interview him and he can share his thoughts and his, uh, his musical journey thus far. So we hope you enjoy. Stephen Vogel here. We're really excited. Um, Stephen was one of my former students um, at Texas State University and is currently killing it. I mean, he's like all over the place, performing all over the place, well, especially before um, this pandemic. Uh, but he's been extremely creative and has crafted a, an exciting um, uh, career for himself. And so, Stephen, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for yeah. being with us. I'm really excited to be joining you guys. Right now, it's awesome to see familiar faces. Uh, oh. you know, even, even if I'm in my living room, it's nice to pretend that I'm not. Right, right. exactly. <laughs> we'll just pretend like we're at a coffee shop somewhere. Yeah, sure. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm prepared. I've got it. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> so, Stephen, we always like to ask all of our guests, you know, tell us about your musical journey. And we really love it that you're not so far removed from the, you know, student experience. And so really interested in kind of how that transition's been for you. You. Yeah, um, I'm three years out from my master's. So I, I finished my master's three years ago at UT Austin. Uh, yeah, you guys, you guys got some love for it. We're yeah, not biased it, or anything. no, no, of course not. No <laughs> bias whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, so I'm three years out from that, and I've been living in the Houston area for those three years. And my transition was um, a little. Uh, I'm not going to say uh, rough because it, it was very smooth, but I will say a little unusual. So I had made plans uh, to do a doctorate after my master's. I had auditioned and been accepted. I'd done all the things. And the program that I auditioned to experienced some uh, funding cuts. And so then suddenly I didn't have a place to go to get a doctorate anymore. And I, uh, I reached out to some folks about, you know, okay, maybe I can go get a, a performance certificate or something like that. And I was very interested in that. Uh, but at the time, uh, my girlfriend, who's now my fiance, um, who was supposed to be my wife, we got married. We were supposed to get married a couple days ago, except for COVID, unfortunately. Oh, wow. uh, so, so it's okay. It's fine. Uh, you know, we have a date set. We're excited. But anyway, uh, she got a job in Houston, and uh, I, I said, you know, well, I can figure something out. You know, I, I can make it work. So I just moved out there. Uh, started reaching out to some people about teaching opportunities. Was doing the private lessons thing for a while, and I figured. As long as I could have that, as long as I could have something that was going to sustain me financially, then I could start the performance career part because that's what I was really interested in doing. Um, and I thought that it was probably going to be like a one or two year pit stop uh, before the next thing. And got out there, started teaching, was really enjoying my studio uh, and just started emailing every contractor and every band leader and personnel manager that I could find online and just sending all that out. And I've been incredibly fortunate uh, that I got a lot of calls back. I think I moved to town at the right time. There was a need. I filled in that need and uh, I've been super fortunate. Now I play in a few orchestras um, and then about a year ago, I was teaching at a small summer festival in San Antonio, and I ended up co-teaching uh, with Rodney Marsalis, who has the Rodney Marsalis Philadelphia Big Brass, and we connected. And since then, I've been fortunate to be touring with them uh, across the country for about the past year. So it was, uh, you know, the teaching aspect has been super fulfilling and sustaining. And thankfully, the performance aspect over the past, I would say, year and a half has become the same thing. Uh, and so I keep a very full calendar, and I, I feel very, very fortunate for that. Wow, wow hey, that's you, awesome. You did pretty good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did great. <laughs> um, and so, Stephen, tell us, you know, how did you even choose trombone? I yeah. mean, I'm biased as a pianist. I'm like, come on, guys. My story, my story's not good. Like, I, I, I'm going to be really honest with you. So we we had a trumpet in our house growing up, and uh, I had fooled around on it, and my parents were like, good, we own a trumpet. 
uh, so you're going to play the trumpet, right? I said, yeah, 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 I'm going to play the trumpet. And I walked in, and I don't know if it's because the trumpet class was already full or if this particular director actually felt this way, but I walked in, and I said, I'm going to play the trumpet. You know, I'm in the fifth grade. And he goes, no, your lips are too fat. You're going to play the trombone. Um, and here I am, you know, a career later. Uh, <laughs> so that, but I will say immediately, as soon as the trombone got put in my hand, I was like, oh, this is really cool. Because uh, I think I think the director did a good job of selling like oh it's the only one with the slide and you know you get to make all these sounds and that's still like my mantra when I'm you know introducing students to the trombone it's like no we're the only person that gets to do this <laughs> um, but but he also sold me pretty quickly like even in middle school was like yeah like you can play jazz really easily like this is a great jazz instrument and I was fortunate to have a director at that time who we had a jazz band in the seventh grade we had actually wow. two jazz bands. Mm. And so in the seventh grade was teaching me, you know, this is how we're going to learn to improvise. Like we're going to learn to swing, stuff like that. So the trombone became the perfect instrument for me to play classical music because I, I played piano for like 10 years before I ever touched a trombone. I did not yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 no, no, I know. Not at all. But I played piano for 10 years. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good enough to be super functional and like work with my kids. Okay. Uh, like, like I can, I can sit down and do a little boom, chuck, chuck, boom, chuck, chuck. If I'm, if I'm helping them out. Uh, but no, I'm not good. <laughs> but, but yeah, so, so that's how I came to the trombone and, uh, I, I've picked up other instruments along the way. Uh, I play a lot of guitar. Um, and I, uh, my fiance is a uh, orchestra director. So I have, uh, poorly attempted my way through all the string instruments at various times. Um, but yeah, I, I have mostly just been working on all my low brass doubles and trying to just be the best like low brass player I can. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Man. Very cool. <laughs> so um, with your teaching, um, you know, I know you teach at TLU. Like how many mm -hmm. how many students do you teach there? Uh, we have a pretty good sized studio. So it's trombone and euphonium, and we have you know we float usually I would say between uh, like eleven and fourteen. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. T like, TLU is a wonderful. Uh, school, you know, I almost said little school, but our school of music is actually like pretty sizable. Um, and so we, we have a great studio. Um, we are undergraduate only, uh, and it's a good blend of students who are interested in teaching, students who are interested in performing. And then also, and this is something I really like, students who are non-majors but have a performance scholarship. So they're going into accounting or engineering, whatever it may be, and still enjoy playing, and they're actually getting paid to play at the university. Wow. Uh, to play in the bands and things like that. Um, and then they are taking lessons for six semesters as part of their, their scholarship. Yeah, so so you, they get three years of really great musical training um, along with, you know, whatever else there is they're doing in school. So I, I love that we're creating, like, really balanced human beings. Um, and that's something that I, I really enjoy about my school. That's awesome. And for our listeners, TLU is Texas Lutheran University. Mm -hmm. Um, and Stephen and I actually both taught there, different points in our in our yeah. lives. But I'm curious, can you tell a listener, especially someone coming out of a master's degree or even a doctorate degree, like how did you get the gig? Yeah. I was watching like a hawk um, every. So like I I I'm pretty active on social media, and every time I see someone who just won a job or is moving or anything like that, I immediately go check out where they were coming from. Oh. Wow. Uh, and, well, it just, you know, it, uh, I think that our, our market moves so fast. Um, and a lot of times a committee can know who they want in mind even before the posting's there. And so if there's a way that you can, you know, see it before the posting exists and start saying, who do I know at the school? Like, where have we crossed paths? Things like that. So I had a, you know, my, my colleague from before, uh, but from, from my master's. I uh, had the job previously, uh, Dr. Evan Sankey, who's now in the Air Force, a uh, phenomenal player. And I saw that he won the job, and I just immediately shot him a message. I was like, dude, yeah, you know, way to go. Uh, and then we transitioned into talking about uh, TLU and how that was going to work. And he said, actually, you know, I'm leaving, and you'd be a great fit. And so, uh, you know, at that point, got all my materials together. Before there was a posting, completely redid my CV, everything, you know, statement of purpose, all of it. Got it all to the right person before the job was posted. Um, and I feel like that was really important because I know for me coming out of school, I only had a master's. Um, and that does put you at a disadvantage sometimes in these searches, you know, DMA a lot of time is preferred or required. And so I felt like that preparation and that like quick start on it was one of the things that ended up being really beneficial for me. 
I love that. I love oh. that you say quick start. And you're such a hustler. You got yeah. that eagle hawk eye out there. But you have you have to. Like you yeah. you absolutely have to. You know I. Uh, not to throw it too far back, but I remember before I was a student at Texas State University, uh, hearing from my trombone professor um, that I don't believe in starving artists, I believe in lazy artists. Mm -hmm. And that really stuck with me. And I've always felt that way as well, because if you're able to find the opportunity, there's no reason why you can't seize it. But the opportunity is not just going to come to you. You know, like like you're not going to be sitting on your couch and someone's going to say, "Hey, can I offer you a job?" You have to put yourself in that in that place. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Exactly. Wow. So you have like your university position, and then you say you also teach in Houston. Like, how many students are you teaching out there? Right now, you know, with COVID and everything going on, it's probably in the like low twenties. Mm -hmm. um, and but when I started, when I first moved out to Houston, I was probably teaching like sixty five or seventy students a week. You know, wow. doing, yeah, doing a lot of half hour lessons, doing, you know, occasional hour long, because like I said, I needed something that was going to be financially stable for me. You know, I, I agree with the mantra that money doesn't buy you happiness, but stability can definitely help. And so I, I needed something that was going to be stable. And so I started building that, right, building that, building that to where then I could say, all right, even though I don't have a job yet that has a salary, I've essentially created a salary for myself. I know what this is. I, I can make this happen. Uh, but now, because of the, the college teaching opportunities and some of the performance opportunities, I've really shrunk it down. I, I keep maybe, like I said, 25 to 30. And uh, it's all high school. And I try to uh, keep it a little bit more selective. So the lessons that I do teach with those students are very, very rewarding. As a teacher, they're very rewarding. I have very, very talented students um, all across the Houston area. And then I feel like for my students, because I have fewer to teach now, I'm able to be a lot more specialized and really like give them the curriculum they need to advance. Whereas when you're teaching 60 or 70, uh, it's much harder to have like individual goals for every student and help them get to those. Exactly. Wow, man, that's that's amazing. So you're just like all over the place, like the musician's musician. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I guess you know, I, 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 I. I uh, I use, I've used the word fortunate like a bunch of times. I, I you know, other synonyms, lucky, you know, whatever. But um, it, it, I think one thing that worked out for me better than I could have ever planned, and I could, I legitimately could not have planned this, is that Houston was a place and is a place that just has demand. You know, and, and I think that's something that that I would recommend for all artists. Not, you know, I'm not saying everyone moved to Houston, but I am saying like, look at where you're heading and know what that place needs and, and what, what you can offer. And if there's no need in that place, do I really need to go there? Right. Uh, you know, because I think a lot of us, um, we know like, we know the places we're supposed to go, right? You're like, you know, I know, I know like New York City is a great scene. I know LA is a great scene, all those sort of things, Nashville. And there are tons of musicians that make that um, and they make it work. I think we can also though look at, you know, what does that market look like? Am I gonna fit in in that market? And do the skills that I bring to the table mesh with that? And for me, as someone who felt really strongly about their teaching and felt really strongly about their way, their ability to play in multiple environments, Houston was perfect because I was going to have the opportunity to do some symphony work, to do some commercial music, to do some teaching. And all that happened within the course of you know four or five days uh, and bounce back and forth. So I think that that was the number one thing for me was going to the right place. At the time, I didn't know it, but now it, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, that's awesome. I got a question. So you said you had like 65 students or yep. some crazy number, and now you only have 20 to 30. Mm -hmm. What was What is that process like? Because there might be people out there who have just graduated or even been in the field for quite some time and like, man, I really don't want to teach all these students or like some of them are just draining to me. What was yep. your process of cutting? Like, how did you do that nicely? Sure, nicely. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you know, I think uh, I think of it the same way as I do if I was going to need to arrange a sub for a gig, uh, which is an experience a lot of us had had. You know, so if, if I'm going to leave, because a, a lot of times the way this is working is you're working in tandem with a school district or a school or something like that, and that's how you're coming into contact with these students. If I'm going to be leaving a position, I'm not just saying deuces, I'm out. I'm saying, hey, I'm making a change in my personal career path. Um, but I'd like to recommend these, you know, three, four, five people 
who, who can take care of your needs. I've already spoken to them. They're already interested. They're very qualified. Here are their materials. That way, as someone else who is, if I'm a parent with a student, I don't have to just go, you know, God, who's going to teach my student? Or if I'm a band director with 35 other things going on, I don't have to go out of my way to look. It's just right there. It's yeah. just done. And I think whether you're leaving a gig, like a teaching gig, a playing gig, whatever it may be, making a smooth exit is just as important as what you do while you're there. Because if, if, if you leave everything on fire, they're not going to have anything nice to say about you on the other end. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that was really big for me too. But another thing that I did, and I think this, this goes to a concept of uh, sort of knowing your worth in a way, is I made the decision to raise my rates and to say, you know what, I want the studio to be a little bit more selective. I want the studio to be a little bit more competitive. Uh, and I want to give you more of my time. Like I, I want each of you to have access to more of me. But for that to work, you know, I, I still have to pay my mortgage. I still have to do those sort of things. Uh, and so this is one of the this is one of the things that goes along with that. And what I found was that the students who I really wanted to continue working with and who we were getting along really well, and I had those relationships with their families as well, um, there was not a single issue. And, and, and of course, you know, if, if a student was ever struggling with making ends meet on that, we can absolutely work out the price. I'm not, you know, I don't want anyone to not have access to the information. Um, but I was very scared to run my rates up. Uh, and I found that it was actually one of the better things that I could have done for myself. One, because I was, I was evaluating my time at a higher level. And two, because exactly like I said, I could go home and I wasn't so drained that I didn't want to think about the trombone. I could go home and practice. I could work on, okay, tomorrow I'm seeing these five students. This is what they need and put together that essentially lesson plan before I went out the door the next day. And that was huge for the studio and huge for me. I love that. Yeah. You said you're making a career change for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds so yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal that. I'm not going to lie. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep, go ahead and keep that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you just got to you, you gotta rub people the right way. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and some, sometimes for all of us, we have to make decisions that are in our best interest and maybe are not in the best interest of a program or something like that. But we can do everything in our power to make sure that they are better off when you leave than they were when you got there. And I, I think that's that's been my goal as much as I've been able to as I've transitioned through this uh, because I, this isn't like the lessons scene is one with really high turnover. Yeah. And I think everyone is aware of that and everyone knows that. So if you can do your part to make that turnover easier, you know, you're, you're doing a service to everyone. That's awesome. Absolutely. Hey, wow. good stuff. So I have another question for you. Um, mm -hmm. So what did you learn in your professional career that you wish that you knew back when you were a student? Mm. Um, there's a lot of things. But I've been, I've been, I've been thinking about this one for a while. Uh, I, I had a great conversation uh, with a colleague uh, last time I was on tour, before the world ended. Um, <laughs> and, you know, he, we were talking about finishing school and getting a case of the shouldas. You know, I should, I should this, I should that, whatever. And what I, what I took away from that was um, something that had been thrown around in my mind for a while, and it's you are not a finished product. You, you know, when you're in school, you're not a finished product, but just because you have a degree or a title or even, even a, you know, a job, you're not a finished product yet. And so if you have a bad playing day or playing week or, you know, you, you missed that F sharp on a gig, whatever it is, um, that's not a deficiency in you as a person or a player it doesn't say, oh, I'm, ne I'm never going to be great. You know, I'm never going to be Joe Alessi. Uh, what, what it means is you're not a finished product. You're still learning. You're still getting better. And that's helped me get through, uh, I mean, a playing injury. That's helped me get through periods of my life when I just didn't feel like I was able to practice enough because I was really busy. Uh, you know, I'm not a finished product. I'm going to continue to get better. And then with that, because you're not a finished product, you should still be working to finish that product. Uh, and so that's something I wish I could go back and tell, especially myself when I got into my master's because I got out of my undergrad thinking like, all right, like, I'm done, right? Like, this is the part where I just go get a job. Uh, and then I, I got to my master's realizing, oh, there's still so much to learn. And I had to transition out of that previous mindset into a growth mindset and continue that through. So, yeah, like me at 21, 22 could have really used that information. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. 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 The world doesn't need two Joe Alessis. It needs a Joe Alessi, a Stephen Bogle, and a Martin Sure. Lee. Sure, yeah. <laughs> That's a, that's a good way to put it. But, but yeah, you know, because I think we, there's already so much pressure in what we do. 
you know, our, our industry, uh, you live for it. You know, you love those moments. Uh, but there's so much pressure on what we do. You don't have to go put more on yourself in your own private time. You know, like your headspace doesn't need to be a negative place. Yeah. And so by framing everything in that way, um, I've been a way healthier player. I've been a better player, too. You know, I, I just like my practice is more productive and my performance is more relaxed. And when it's more relaxed, I'm, I'm better. You know, yeah. it, just, it just is. Uh, so, yeah, that, that would be mine for sure. That's awesome. So, Steven, you, since you've got all this free time now, um, what, what do you do for fun? You know? Oh, man. Uh, so we just we just bought a house. Um, wow. and so, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my, my first, my very first house. And so uh, my free time has been doing everything around here. Uh, so we, you know, I've learned about gardening. I'm about to learn about, you know, putting down flooring. Uh, oh. <laughs> yes, I don't, I don't know how fun that is, but I, I'm having a good time with it. We're enjoying ourselves. Um, I have been, so I've always been uh, a runner. That's like my sport of choice. And so I've been doing a lot more of that. Um, I was going to say I'm like, Pretty sunburned from this morning. Uh, I've been doing a lot more of that. I've been practicing my doubles. Uh, so like, I got, I got my bass hormone back here, and I've, I'm finally making the time to like really learn my way through that beast. Um, and I'm playing video games. Uh, that's like that's like my that's my personal like away time. Like I took care of business on the horn today. I taught my lessons today. I did everything I'm supposed to do. I'm gonna decompress. Yes. And so yeah, do do a little bit of that. Uh, and then also um, I have been I, I brew my own beer and I've been doing a lot of that. So we are we are a very popular house in the neighborhood. Nice. Oh <laughs> yeah. well, when we can get back out, we're we need it. Well, we'll yes. see the house. Yeah. And yeah. And Martin needs to drink your beer. Yeah. Y'all come on down. Beer, but yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah. No, I'm I'm ready for you guys. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I've been doing just uh, trying to diversify my day enough to where I don't feel like I'm stuck in my house. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, yeah. Like you know, I'm I'm gonna go practice in this room, and then I'm gonna go eat breakfast in this room, and you know, g- give myself the tour every day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Man, that's awesome stuff. Stevens, thank you so much for being here and, and agreeing to have this this interview. Like everything that you said, it was just amazing information and very inspiring um, for our listeners. And we really appreciate yeah, it. And ourselves. I feel yeah. like I learned so much. No. I'm just like this the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate you guys having me. Uh, you know, like I said, right, especially right now, I think it's important that we all stay connected as best we can. Um, and so this was awesome. You know, I've, I've been looking forward to this for a little while. That's awesome. Yeah. So speaking of connected, where can they mm-hmm. find you? Oh yeah, so I'm on uh, social. If you want to find me on Instagram, I'm just Stephen Vogel One. Or on my website, I have a bunch of recordings and uh, instructional packets and things like that. And that's just stephenwvogel.com. Uh, so S T E V N. W V O G E L dot com. Awesome. awesome. Man, this is great. I'm extremely proud of you. And it's like, like I Thank said you. in the beginning, you're out there, you're killing it, and doing what you're supposed to be doing. So that's awesome, man. Thanks, Dr. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. So bye, everyone. See you. Bye, all. <laughs> <laughs>